one, two, three. Oh, I already hit it. Sorry. All right. It's like uh, it's like we the nuclear. Car, we have to turn the key at the same time now. Yeah. You only yes. reference Seinfeld's post Larry David, and it makes me mad. <laughs> it's really upsetting. Well, that's such a crazy episode. Just that she says no to like fucking that, that, that's so crazy that she says like no to him. That seems like that subplot could be in any Seinfeld. No, it is a crazy no idea. And then he has two girlfriends at the same time because he can't break up. No, it's ridiculous. And it is ridiculous. I don't know. I mean, I was watching an early episode, these realistic episodes you speak of. And it no, was what no, Kramer's sorry. like. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's just one where Kramer's like, uh, they're like, he can't remember this woman. And he's like, wait, you know what? I'm friends with uh, a sketch artist at the police <laughs> office. We'll just go there and he'll sketch it. That's not crazy. It's a little crazy, but it's funny. It makes yeah. sense. It is something that could happen. Like, it's I mean, a, a woman, funny idea that he's doing. Yes, but a woman saying no to, like, I want to break up with you is a funny concept. What's so crazy? No, but in the this, well, what, the way it unfolds is insane. And also, like, that's not how it works. Like, if she broke, if you break up with someone, you broke up with them. It's uh -huh. ridiculous that he feels he has to keep dating her, even though she broke up. The Kramer one the Larry David one is funny because he's like, I don't have a photo back in the day. There wasn't photos. If there wasn't a photo, there's not a true, photo. And he's like, true. but I do have a friend that's a sketch artist. Wouldn't that be fun if true. she drew it? Let's go have fun and do this thing. I mean, I will give you that when Newman wants to eat Kramer. Cause oh, it's awful. Cooked in butter. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> that might be a little. It's terrible. Uh, I, I definitely don't think it's jump the shark. It's not jump the shark. Let's pause this conversation because it's not about a film. We have all to right, get to right. something very important. <laughs> what? And you what? know what it is. What? I have to address the previous episode because oh. you did something <laughs> that actually makes me curious about you as a person. Uh -huh. and makes me want to. Your, your girlfriend listens to the podcast. I want you to pay very close attention, Ronan's girlfriend. This man can manipulate and I never thought of you as a manipulator. <laughs> Every comment was like, Joe is wrong. And I'm like, we did something. We went awry somewhere because here's what happened. I said the Schindler's List incident. Uh -huh. I said at the beginning, I go, if anyone has a comment, just say pause and we'll pause and we can say something. My intention was to watch the movie without talking. Yes. That was and your intention. I did not initiate any of the talking, but it was and early on. It got so out of control with everybody talking, not just you, everybody. So I uh -huh. would go. I would add in some stuff because I didn't want to be a tyrant who's like, everyone shut up. Right. So right, I right. would go. Yeah, that is funny. I would. Yes. And but people are acting like I you initiated the talking and it was you who was like the pana. You're doing the lines before uh -huh. they happen. And you're talking about unrelated things. And also, I do think I'm right. You do assume, OK, we were all talking the first third, but surely now we're into it. I, I guess that's the all or nothing thing. I also think you can't like if you're going to have comics hang and talk. I mean, this this fantasy in which comics are going to be riffing and then we're going to solemnly put on Schindler's List and not talk is like insanity to assume that. We're what if we all went to the theater? There. If we all went to the theater, would I have theater's to assume different. comics? Theater is different because there's other people around. That's different. Uh, what if we were the only ones That's in the theater? I mean, is this a is this a retrospect or is it the Schindler's List like premiering? What's the situation? The point is, <laughs> That's we, a big you twisted things to make it seem like I was like, I'll talk, I'll talk, I'll talk, and then I decide when people don't talk. The thing was, yeah. everybody was talking, and I talked the least percentage after other people were already talking. Yeah, I mean, you did talk, though. You had some good jokes. Yes, but only after people were talking and I thought, OK, we're getting this out now. Right. But this you idea were, that you were only yes and it is, you know, that, that you is true. Riffs. That was all yes and you didn't you didn't break the silence. Yes, really. That's true. Yes. Well, I had better riffs than you. I mean, that's not my fault. You know, no, one of your riffs was <laughs> do I look like I've lost weight in the face. <laughs> that's a funny thing to say during a Holocaust. But program. you weren't being funny. You said it to Sarah and then you just like get this little break off comment. Everyone could hear it. It was horrendous. Well, there's like fucking skeletons at Auschwitz. It's hilarious. That's the riff. It was um, awful. Well, anyway, I, you know, I, I don't try to manipulate, but maybe it, uh, maybe it's subconscious or, you know, I've been reading this Charles Manson book. So maybe some of it's uh 
Oh yeah, Helter Skelter. You know, uh, coming off of me. Crazy, uh, crazy story. My favorite thing in Helter Skelter is, um, sorry, my friend has one of those like Buddhists where you, you color, you paint and it disappears. Oh, nice. That's um, a, so I'm win. drawing a dick on it, of course. How can you, you just have to draw a dick. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Helter Skelter, my, the funniest thing in any book ever is in Helter Skelter where the two police forces are like, oh, we already talked about this, I think. But they're like, unrelated. I don't know. It's like, amazing. Two crimes, two like people murdered in a house, both with the words pig written in blood. And they're like, ah, all these crazy different separate crimes. <laughs> Weird. Now, it's should we dead. tell them about it? No, no, don't let them know. That's fine. <laughs> separate. Let them do that, their work. This book makes the police look worse than any shooting on camera. It's just like the worst. Just a bunch of fucking numbskulls, you know? So bad. But it is as much as we love Once Upon a Time in Hollywood now. Yeah. I was so disappointed when I first saw it because I was like, oh, here's going to be a movie about the Manson murders. But that's expectation. You came in with the wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I understand that. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I uh, you know, I'm like my therapist. They always say like an obvious thing that's kind of clear in what i'm saying you know what i mean i'm like i always have these expectations of the ruin that my therapist is like well you really got to manage expectations you're like you don't think i know that you don't that's think the, i'm like that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying that's what my therapist did it's rub it off on me um no i'm saying i'm with you on this i'm agreeing okay. yeah, i'm yeah. doing your part with the therapist oh i see i see god fuck mm. um <laughs> anyway so I uh, yes, I will say this. So the first time I saw Charles, the the once upon a time, I was a little woke, I think, or something. I, I didn't know the mansion crimes. So at the end, when he's beating up all those women, I'm like, this is terrible. Punching a Brad Pitt. I'm like, this is terrible. Oh. Punching a woman. But the problem is, I didn't know the crimes that well. I mean, I knew it. But then I read about the crimes and I'm like, yeah, fucking punch those whores in the face. They're the fucking worst. Yeah, women can be really mean the way they stab pregnant women, pregnant women who are pleading with them. Uh, But yeah, great book. Uh, Check it out, you know, and uh, we got a lot of good questions today, by the way. I can't wait. I haven't looked at any of them, so they're all going to come as a surprise to me. I already wrote my answer, so I might be a little, you know, um, no, I'm going to suck. I'm going to go like this. (laughs) But you're good. You can carry the pot. It's amazing. This podcast is flipped at the beginning. Everybody loved me. I was the best. I, they were like, I were watching it. We hate Ron on. Yeah. He's a piece of shit. Yeah. Now you carry the pod and everyone's like, Joe doesn't know shit about movies. He's a <laughs> fucking idiot. And uh, Ron on hilarious. And Joe said, one guy possible, said, babe? one yeah. guy on the review said, you guys, you got it. Before you listen to this podcast, watch Ron on stand up. It'll change the podcast because that way you're not just a loser schmuck who's <laughs> annoying. You're like a brilliant comic who's oh. annoying. Yeah, it creates a, it's it's complicated, you know, like like, you know, Bill Cosby raped all these women. Good comic. Did I tell you, you this know? guy, yeah. Seth, Seth Coles, Dallas comic? Mm-hmm. Did I tell you his joke? Mm. I can't remember if we talked about this. Maybe not. He had a great joke. Did I not tell you this? They say this in the pod. I can't remember. Just say it. He said, um, you know, in the 80s, when I was when I was a kid, there was no uh, PG-13 rating. It was just PG and R. He goes, yeah. that's a huge difference. That's like going from Bill Cosby to Bill Cosby. <laughs> That's such great. a good yeah. joke. M- little movie trivia. Do you know which movie uh, began the PG-13 rating? Yes. Damn. Gremlins. No. Okay. Gremlins <laughs> and Raiders of the Lost Ark combo. I think it's Temple of Doom. Whatever. Temple of Doom. But Gremlins <laughs> was a big part of it, too. Was it? Or maybe yes. both said, it maybe was it was all the or Are you okay. sure we didn't have this exact conversation? We've maybe never Mark said and I. This. Maybe yeah, yeah. Mark and I had this. I was my fun fact, which is very fun, is that it was Temple of Doom because there's no cursing. They don't say the N word, but they rip the heart out. So it's like, yeah, there's got to be some. You can't rip a fucking heart out in a PG movie. I thought that was, but maybe Gremlins was the same year or something. Yeah, well, I heard. I, I think it's part of both. It was a conglomerate because Gremlins, and I can't talk about it too loud because my niece and nephew are here. But in okay, Gremlins, yeah. they literally say, my dad went down the chimney pretending to be Santa Claus and he died in a fire. And that's how I realized there's no you know who. Oh, I say that that in a PG a movie. movie. <laughs> and they also throw a gremlin in the microwave and like set it, explode it. Yeah, yeah, that's and bad. It was PG. It was like, PG. like check out, because they had Gizmo on the poster and they were like, check out Gizmo, it's fun. And then literally they're like, my dad died in a fire. Oh, so maybe that's it. So gremlins was PG. Yes. 
And then Temple of Doom actually was PG-13. So maybe Gremlins made Temple of Doom PG-13. Yes. We're both right. Yes. Uh, that can happen. We both can be right. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. I think we're both right 100% of the time, except for when 100%. you say stupid shit. Um, okay. So lot, really good questions. Uh, we got to thank everyone who uh, asked, asked questions. Um, uh, here's the first one. I mean, thoughts on Adam McKay's recent works. Vice, Big Short, and Succession from your boy, Sammy T. I'm going to start naming the people. Succession, I've never seen. It's a great show, except for um, last season. I confuse Succession and Billions. I only know about it from the joke that you wrote, and I don't yeah. know which one's which. Well, I, well the joke is what? Uh, Dan Soder uh, almost got on SNL, but it was a blessing in the sky because he's now in uh, Succession for retards. Yeah, because yes. Succession is a much better show. Right. Um, uh, I don't know the show. Is amazing. Yeah. I mean, Billy's is also very good. Big He's short. Trying to get Brian Koppelman on here. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess um, we love that <laughs> Big short. I liked I saw it in the theater in L.A. the night before a TV taping. And I, it was when I was really having a lot of anxiety. And yeah, it like was freaky. And then the, th the thing about the water at the end, which made me nervous. I only saw it once. so I don't remember it that well. I remember thinking it was pretty good. I think it must be hard to watch a movie for a, a TV taping. I mean, because that, that week is brutal. You can't concentrate, you know? Well, the best one, I've had great moments. I had this tradition when I go to L.A. to do TV, I watch a movie the night before. I take the night off. I always do that. Uh -huh. And one time I saw It Follows, which I love. Good movie. Loved it. Glad you liked it. One time it was Rear Window, which was great because it was a movie I'm so familiar with. So it was like a warm blanket. Yeah. And I told you one of my, my saddest movie viewing moments ever i watched it at a packed house in la and then the scene where he falls out of the window everybody laughed out loud and it just broke yeah. my heart but it is i mean it's it's bad as they start doing that fast forward shit it's like that was a big special effect back in the day you just press fast forward <laughs> it was like, uh, <laughs> <I> was like <laughs> it's, it's brutal but i i get it yeah that sucks um you know, have I talked? Have I talked about? That's a good question for this. What's your saddest movie experience? So that's yours. You know what mine is? Mine's pretty no. sad. Oof, let me try to guess. You're <laughs> masturbating, and the woman my, catches you. My saddest movie experience: first year in New York. No one invited me to a Thanksgiving Day thing. Ooh. So instead, I go. I get a one of those Thanksgiving sandwiches at Dunkin' Donuts, a cranberry. Mm. It should just come with a suicide capsule. It's like a cranberry stuffing turkey sandwich. I a bought Dunkin that. Donuts? Yeah, I was just leaning in. Got that, got a coffee, went to see Manchester by the Sea. Oh, no, I didn't get a coffee. I just got the sandwich. Ate the sandwich, went to see Manchester by the Sea. Someone was sitting next to me drinking a coffee, and they spilled it all over my lap. Why were they sitting next to you? Was it packed? It was packed. On Thanksgiving? I don't know why it was packed. Oh, no, 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 I'm fucking this up. I think I had a coffee and I may have just spilled it all over my lap. Great Seinfeld. That seems more likely is what happened. Yeah, <laughs> I think in my memory does. I blamed it. I think in my memory I blamed it on someone else. Thanksgiving um, packed house from Manchester by the sea. That, that, that dog don't hunt. That doesn't sound right at all. Line out the door. All these families. You know how everyone likes to watch a, a children dying in a fire movie? So, yeah, I guess it wasn't. That's funny that in my memory I had someone else, but it's always me being the klutz. But I, I you spilled the coffee. Trying to manipulate my emotions. That's true. I spilled the coffee all over my, my uh, lap and uh, and then watched it. And, uh, you know, that is a how tragedy can happen. But at least it's like a tremendous movie. It was a great movie. But you know what? I think there's always a part of me that even though I love that movie, there's something that I didn't. I have some issue with it. I think deep down, it's just that it was the saddest movie experience of my life. Yeah, there's weird things like talking about Seinfeld, the episode with the pig man, the mm -hmm. bris, which is not a great episode in general. I don't love that episode anyways. Also but seems like a slightly crazy subplot, but yes. Yes, it's not great. It's, <laughs> it's not a good one. Um, but it happened like my girlfriend had just broken up with me mm -hmm. in high school and I was watching that episode. So I just have such a dark memory of that. I know that, you know, we talk about this on the, the, the pod, like, uh, so, like, so, uh, you know, you try to have good, valid, objective criticism, but like, I truly think like 40% of you appreciating a movie is your mood and like 40% is the expectations you come in with the movie, you know, and then there's really just 20% left for uh, 
any kind of actual impersonal criticism, you know? Well, that's why I really, for me, I have to watch a movie two, three, four times to really get it, unless it's like a complete piece of dog shit, like old. Right. You got to watch it in different moods to make sure it's not just a mood shit situation. You know what I mean? That's a good point. It's kind of like um, in a relationship. I always think you should have two full years before you even think about getting engaged. Two Christmases, two birthdays, two yes. Fourth of July's, two everything before yes. you even think about being like, we should get married. You need to because one is just a fluke. It could be just a good year, you know, exactly. Two, exactly. you know, yeah, it's true. I actually uh, speaking similarly, I you ever because it's not just a bad mood makes you not like a movie. Sometimes a bad mood can make you love a movie. Have you ever had that situation where you're just so depressed? Like, I remember I was so depressed and then I watched Jumanji 2 and I was like, this is a <laughs> masterpiece. I was just like, <laughs> but that happened to me another time. I was really depressed and I was thinking about this like woman I used to love. And then I watched a movie yesterday, which I do think is a good movie, but it made me like think this is like one of the top five greatest movies of all time. And I think it had to do with my loneliness. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then I watch it again. I'm like, this isn't as good as I remember. <laughs> well, you've been pushing it on me like it's like it's I still, uh, you think, know, it's good. <laughs> I still think it's good. But but my my unrequited love depression may have may have uh, overblown it a little, but there's still well, great stuff in it. I think I talked about this in the pod. I'm all in repeat. I do too many podcasts. I don't know what's been recorded and what hasn't, but the movie Begin Again with Mark Ruffalo, I told you, yes. I did the whole weekend at Funny Bone. It was Sunday. Me and Tommy Jonigan, the MC, we went and saw it, and I was like, I love this movie. This movie's fantastic. Begin it's Again not. is your yesterday. Yes. It's, kind of, it's very similar, too. Like, you know, beautiful woman and, you know, uh, Indian guy, you know, no, but it's it's uh it's a uh, very uh yeah it's there's always a couple of movies where you just when you saw it, you know, you blow it up a little. Okay, here's, but here's, yeah. oh, wait, we we got to still finish the question because we haven't talked about Vice. Yeah, but real quick, what's the Sam Raimi movie with Billy Bob Thornton? Oh, Simple Plan. Simple Plan. Movie. That movie I saw with my friends and I was like, this is as good as Fargo because it came right after Fargo. Yeah, right, right. And like I remember being year, like, yeah. wow, this is like another Fargo, and like for like. <laughs> A year. I mean, I was in high school, but I was like Fargo and Simple Plan one in one A. And <laughs> le years later, you're like, Simple Plan's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's yeah. like it's good. <laughs> the ending is hilarious because don't they do the of mice and men ending where Billy Bob Thornton's like, just shoot me, <laughs> or it's like of mice and men, but he asked to be shot. Isn't it's it? It's really sweet that you think I'm familiar <laughs> with of mice and men. <laughs> That's um, touching. But um, yeah. Well. I, I do not like Big Short. I do not like Adam McKay. I don't like funny Adam McKay. I don't like serious Adam McKay. They can all fucking uh, blow me. Uh, Big Short is one of those movies that's well made and it can be entertaining, but it's my least favorite type of movie where it's made for people who are like, fuck Wall Street, fuck rich people. And then they watch the movie, they leave going, yeah, exactly what I thought before I came in the movie. And I'm not, and I'm not saying like, don't fuck rich people. But the idea of a movie just confirming the opinion of the person who like came in is uh, 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 not my favorite type of movie. And that seems to be uh, all his serious movies seems to just be that confirming the opinion of the person walking in who are going to see it, you know, well, which let is me ask, Let me ask you this. I know you hate Oliver Stone. What do you think of W? I love W. W. There was some good stuff in W. I mean, there was wait, W. W and Vice are like confusing because they seem so I similar. Know, Sam Rockwell is Bush and Vice, right? Yes. And he's pretty good. Pretty good. But I love Josh Brolin is so likable. And let's be honest, George W. Bush, who's a complete piece of human shit, is also extremely yeah. likable. I mean, I just want to hang right. out with W. Of he's course. like, he, he's delightful. Yeah. Well, he has that charming like laugh after his own joke or laugh like <laughs> like it's just like it's charming. Yeah. Yeah. And Josh Brolin's so likable. W likable. And uh, just a just a good movie. And also, I was like so obsessed and fascinated with the with the Bushes. Yeah, I don't really remember W. I remember Richard Dreyfus as Cheney, which is just weird. I, I don't fully remember it, um, but I remember Vice just being just that bullshit. Where it's just like, yeah, this is exactly, you know, <laughs> it's just like pandering. You know, you don't learn anything. You know. Well, it's hard to what, what like what are they gonna do? Like spin Dick Cheney to be like great. I guess maybe don't make the movie. I don't know. It's like, I guess don't make it because it's like you're making a movie where you hate the main character, you know, and that's just not an interesting thing to watch where you're just like, I'm going to make a movie where I really hate the main character. And I also like 
don't think he's even that complicated. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not even, it's just like, it's, it's, um, yeah, I just, it, it just ends up being very shallow to me. Yeah, I guess I, 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 McKay is not a guy I've ever been really into all these movies. I saw one time. I mean, I don't think I, what is his comedy? It's fucking weatherman bullshit with the catchphrases. I fucking hate that shit, too. Everyone has a fucking catchphrase. Oh, the whale's vagina. Blah, blah, you know, fucking what is this good shit? I don't know. It's a good question. You know who I don't like? It's Danny McBride. I don't get it. I, don't, I never understood yeah. it. it doesn't do I'm an anything. old school guy. Who's that? That's Todd Phillips. I'm a Todd Phillips. Todd Phillips guy. is fantastic. Yeah. No, wait, who did the campaign? I really do like that. Mm, I don't that know McKay? about the campaign. That might have been, been McKay. McKay. Because there's some political shit. It was the beginning of him trying to think he's smart. What about but, um, Ides of March? I love that movie. Love that was a fun that movie. movie. That was a Great fun movie. movie. I love. You got Hoffman and Giamatti, who are very similar. I, I just love anything Philip Seymour Hoffman. He could just eat my mother out in front of me on Christmas Eve, and I'd love it. But that you know, movie funny. is you fantastic. Say, it's funny you say Hoffman, and even though I like, I was like, it's du- it's Philip Seymour Hoffman in that, right? Yeah, that's what I said. No, you see, interesting. Whenever you say Hoffman, I in my head think Dustin still. Oh, I don't. Well, Hoffman's my favorite actor, Philip Seymour. Yeah, that's but true. yeah, that's Dustin true. Hoffman. Eyes of March is fun. It's a good like John Grisham. Me, you got to like those kind of like small little thrillers. You know, they're good. I got to say, I love Ryan Gosling, too. I think he's fantastic. But on the plane ride here, I tried watching Drive, which I never saw. Yeah, this movie sucks. Sucks. Terrible movie. <laughs> Here's, the thing about Ryan. Here's the thing about Ryan Gosling. He can be great at some stuff and then other stuff. He's like almost going full retard. It's like just bad. He's just like a mute who barely talks. It's like, you know what he started doing? And I think it ruined a couple, a lot of his movies. He started doing the um, dead inside thing where he like doesn't do anything. And I'm like, this is not great acting. This is just you not doing anything. And I feel like that's what drive is. He's just, just sitting there. I got another example of movie you see in a certain mood. Yeah. And I think I tweeted this. You're going to, this is so embarrassing. Uh huh. Place Beyond the Pines. After watching that alone on the road, I tweeted, This is the best movie since Goodfellas. <laughs> you must have been so depressed. That's a depressed, a depression before a movie, right? I was, well, I just went and saw, I was by myself on the road and I was like, This looks good. And I was like enamored with it. I was yeah. like, This movie is fantastic. That opening shot, I've only, I haven't seen it, I've seen it twice, I think. And they follow him all the way through into the cage and do the thing. It's such a neat trick they do. And yeah. I, I thought Gosling was great. It was emotional. I was like, this the, movie is unbelievable. The, the, I think the first part is great. Yes. And then it like falls apart. Um, but I do think sometimes maybe you weren't depressed, but I do think sometimes you're like depressed. And then you see a movie and you're like, ah, this kept me from committing suicide. It's the best mm-hmm. thing ever. You know what yes. I mean? But um, the problem with Beyond the Pines, as I uh, as I recall, is uh, is the op- is one of the things that makes Mr. Grimmer successful, even though yeah. if you think about it, it falls apart, is that only by the end, once they reveal the twist, do you realize how contrived stuff is. But in in Beyond the Pines, they kind of show you that they're both sons of different parents first, and then you see the meeting at the cafeteria. So it like reveals that it's like contrived right away. You know, I kind of don't even remember it that well. I just uh, know it's there's a lot of movies that are. But uh, it since good. Uh, is good. Uh, oh, what about this? Oh, God, we, we, didn't, we just got through the first question. Jesus. I know we're like halfway done here. <laughs> if you were opening a movie theater, which features would it have? Coleman Carr just the person asked that question. Which features? Boy, I'm like such an old school guy. I mean, stadium seating, but mm-hmm. and cup holders, but I cup don't holders. want that. I don't want IPA. I don't want sandwiches. I don't want vegan shit. I like mm. a classic two screens. There's like room A and room B, popcorn, M&Ms, whatever, Junior Mints, Coke. That's it. No beer. So you're no thinking hot a very dogs. small theater, just two. Yeah. Okay. Um. And your wildest fantasies, your ideal theater is something that's where you only have two options. That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. no, but here's the thing. Here's why. There's never more than two good movies. This movie's like, we have 17 theaters. And you're like, well, let me tell you something. You got 16 bad movies. Yeah, I mean, like half of them are Spider-Man 2D, Spider-Man 5D, Spider-Man Digital <laughs> IMAX. Exactly. <laughs> this one's Spider-Man with a bendy screen. This is Spider-Man where it was Spider-Man. You shoot <laughs> cum in your face. Who cares? I will say, when I saw that okay. 5D uh, um, First Man, which was like the crazy, because you've never seen a 5D movie, right? 5D sounds like your report card. It 
is it is insane. It's fucking uh I only got one D. It's fucking uh it's like it was in the Union Square and I'm just first man. I get in the seats. The seat starts like moving around and there's like smoke coming out of the screen. At one point someone's blowing you because he's getting blown on screen. It's like a crazy thing. So I would have one of those in there. Oh I wow. love those. Well yeah. Here's what I just learned. You know, a fun fact I just learned because we're talking to a film distributor now because we're right. getting ready to release our movie. One of the questions is about that. Oh, excellent. Do you guess the number one? Well, I don't know if you have to guess, but yeah, guess. Fuck it. The number one highest grossing cinema on planet Earth. Take a guess where it might be. Highest. I, I got to think what that even means. So the uh, movie theater. The most movie tickets sold. In one movie theater. Or I don't know if it's highest grossing. Most tickets. Number one, most people go into the movie. Take a guess where it would be. So it means the location is fascinating. So that means it's not New York, right? I mean, that's kind of process of elimination. It's probably somewhere in Iowa or some shit. I have no idea. Union Square, 14th Street, Regal, 14th Street. That is the number one more tickets than any movie theater on the planet Earth. I really overthought that. I could have just gone. Yeah, with it. <laughs> I, know, I, I almost interrupted and be like, just... it can't be Union Square. That's the only thing I know from this question. It's literally um, the cinema you just mentioned right before. <laughs> yeah, I should have realized that. That's the most. That makes sense. Well, yeah, you it's interesting. It like, but you said it like it's like something crazy. I'm like, that. that's that's that reads. Well, you know what it is? I would think just because New York, there's so many things going on, blah, blah, blah. And there's so many yeah. theaters there. I would have thought it was like Randolph, Massachusetts, like Superplex, like some place, like a mm. mall. I would have thought it was right, a mall right. like outside of, uh, you know, like New Jersey or something. Right. I'm going to start doing that where in the tone, it seems like it's not the obvious guess. Like, guess what the most ferocious animal is? And then it's like, <laughs> it's a tiger. <laughs> like It's just like an <laughs> obvious thing. Um, all right, rank your um, rank your favorite Mel Brooks movies. Mondo Frowno. Well, let's see Boy, if we have or uh, top three. Uh, I I put three. Maybe we'll have the same list. Yeah, I mean, I might get shot because I've never been a huge Mel Brooks guy. I don't know why. Like when I was a kid, I was such a Chevy Chase, John Hughes, Christopher Guest, and then Jim Carrey guy. So Mel Brooks right. was like they were kind of old. I just wasn't as big into them. I love Spaceballs as a kid. Because I was a Star right. Wars guy. So that like blew my mind. That was the first spoof oh, of any kind oh, I'd ever oh, seen. Oh, you just slipped that in. You were a Star Wars guy? When I was a kid, I was a child. <laughs> I, I was I was into WWF and Star Wars when you're supposed to be. Like oh, ages okay, six. Yeah. I when I wanted to be Luke Skywalker. I was obsessed with Star Wars. When There's I was some things you've said when you were young where I'm you're like, I hate like I, you were like eight and you're like, I don't find this movie believable. So I, I'm I, I don't really, I didn't realize you would. I, I could see you at eight just hating Star Wars. But yeah, you're talking like five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah. maybe. Um, yeah. But yeah, so Spaceballs was the first spoof. I like that blew my mind. The idea that they were spoof, making yeah. fun of a thing I had seen. Yeah. I got all yes. the jokes. Yes. Um, Blazing Saddles. I love Spaceballs. I love Blazing like, Saddles. Got to be number one, though. I feel yes. Like. Oh, That's so I, I guess it's Blazing Saddles, Spaceballs and then Young Frankenstein. For me, it's Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, and Producers. Producers was tough. I, I just had a hard time. Yeah, I, I I saw it in high school. Yeah. And I felt like it was like, I can't, I don't get it. I don't know. I loved it. I mean, I, I like, Spaceballs I liked as a kid, but like, I don't know if that, like his earlier ones, I don't know, something about the later spoofs started like, you see it now and you're like, this is for children. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, but, but Blazing Saddles is like, you know, raping women. It's like fucking crazy. It's like, adult comedy. It's adult comedy. Yeah. And Young Frankenstein's got to be next because it has probably the two greatest. I mean, two of the funniest things ever when he's when he does the uh, Frankenstein doesn't wake up and he makes that big speech about being stoic and everything, you know, and then he walked away because I like kill you, you piece of shit. You know, <laughs> that and the part where he's dancing with him. <laughs> and, where he's the, uh, the put on the Ritz song at the end. Yeah. And then someone starts taking flashes and Frankenstein starts going mad. And Gene Wilder goes, you're making us look ridiculous. <laughs> After they just did a song and dance. I got to I got to re re swing around to my Mel Brooks. I never got I love Mel Brooks. when he's talking. I'm like, I love him. I love him in Curb. I love Amazing. all the interviews. Such a sweet guy. Yeah, I just I love everything about him except uh, his movies. I never get to get that. <laughs> he's the opposite of Woody Allen. He's like, like, 
very sweet, not pretentious, but also seems like like he has friends. I remember one time in an interview, they were like, are you friends with Woody Allen? And he just went, nobody's friends with that guy. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, um, him and him and Kyle Reiner are just like the sweetest thing ever. They're comedians in cars just warms my heart. Who do you think Mel Brooks is hanging out with now? Just uh, Carl Reiner's corpse and they're just watching Dances with Wolves together. He's got to be so lonely. It's horrible. I didn't want to think about it. It's bumming me out. Oh, sorry. Makes you want to go watch Place Beyond the Pines so I can cheer up. Uh, <laughs> favorite. Uh, OK. Oh, this is a great one by Matt. Uh, host scene or something. Scorsese, Tarantino, Spielberg, Spielberg. If you had to erase one from history, who would you pick? Erase one right from history. Well, the Nazis tried to erase one of them from history. <laughs> um, it's Spielberg you... for me. I, I, I'm sorry to see him go, but Scorsese is my number one favorite artist of any kind. Well, I know that. Kind. Yeah. So I was going to take out Scorsese. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jaws and Schindler's List are two of my favorite movies ever. I'm out. Of, I'm shocked that you're saying. I think Tarantino is just like an obvious pick. I know, but you're an obvious guy. Um, but, you, but you, Jaws, it's just this. Like, Schindler's List is like your favorite movie. Wait, so wait, can, are we erasing them now? Can I keep my knowledge of Jaws and Schindler's List, the memories? No, because they're erased from history. It never existed. They never existed. This is like Genesis. Yeah, he, 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 he did a very dark way of, uh, yeah. It's like yesterday. Well, you know, <laughs> but that is like... Which one would you want to just make those movies now? This is how, can't we just rank them? I don't want to erase them from history. I mean, that's like, I got to take. Whose generation would you wipe out? I'm like, I got to take Jaws out of existence. That's, which, that's horrible. And then Jaws 2 continues. Which director would you have had executed as a baby? Yeah. Which, which director would you like to see raped in front of you by a huge cock I man? I mean, but I think we Tarantino's got to go. He's got to go. I don't know. I just love those. There's more Tarantino movies that I love than there are Spielberg movies that I love. That's what I'm basing this on. I, I love I all nine. Oh, no, I hate fucking the car. Stupid horse shit. But there's yeah. a lot of Spielberg like Bridge of Spies makes me want to kill Steven Spielberg. Now, that movie yes. is a piece of horse shit. And the Coen brothers name is on there. That is the worst movie I ever saw in my life. I mean, it's a good point that the Tarantino hasn't really ever made a bad movie. Well, he made like the a, one. Death Proof stinks. I know I'm going to yeah. get a lot of emails and go, oh, my God, but it's dang. But even that it's bad. But even that, like, yes, outside of that, all his movies are good. Pretty much. They're right. all good. Yeah. But they're also <laughs> many of them are very similar too. I guess. I feel like Spielberg made like five different, insanely iconic, different type movies. You know what I mean? Like, that, but they're big... similar. They're similar in that they're different in the differences yeah yeah <laughs> like it's not that crazy no but schindler's list just schindler's list and jaws alone is more range than any tarantino thing well schindler's list and jaws are two of the fucking best movies ever it's like my top 13 movies see i guess you don't truck with et and uh, jurassic park as much as i do no i love those movies but if they didn't exist, I mean, they're they're fun. They're great. They're great. I mean, this is a tough question. I'd rather rank. I don't want to kill rape, Steven Spielberg. I'm raping. I'm killing. Tar I'm raping Tarantino's mother. Raping. I'm I'm kicking Tarantino's pregnant mother in the stomach. Yeah. I'm killing her. All uh, right. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. All right. <laughs> um, favorite movies directed written by Albert Brooks and just your thoughts on his filmography by Simon Grinch. Well, everyone knows I talked about it. Lost in America is one of my favorite movies ever. That is his masterpiece to me. And by the way, some guy commented. He's like, hey, thanks for wasting two hours of my time. I watched Lost in America. It's a piece of shit. You guys are idiots. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I, 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 I'm just dumbfounded by it. Yeah, that's that is I, it, it, that has found me dumb. That's insane. Uh, yeah. Lost in America, but defending your life. I think they're both like equally masterpieces great and modern romance is amazing and dark and funny and like modern romance weird. amazing real life is great i think mother has some good moments even the it's muse has moments. a couple of really funny parts like uh yeah no i mean he's he's the best he's he's groundbreaking and he's the, the, the you know the the one 80s comedies that really hold up he's the best we, we'll do a whole episode of him eventually because he really is there's nothing quite like him he's awesome. Ooh, this, is, this is what i want to talk about thoughts on the movie sorry to bother you have you seen that this is by Dome Doom and Pelk or whatever. I don't know his name. Sorry. 
No, I don't know. Sorry to bother you. Maybe I watched it. And I don't remember. It's that woke. It's that movie by Boots Riley, who is like a photographer. It's about the black guy with the white David Cross voice, who's a telemarketer. No, I don't think I saw that. Voice. I didn't look this up. Uh, I fell asleep during it. I hated it. Uh, it felt like a student film and it just had a bunch of different ideas and never explored any. Of them. Oh, it might have been a thing that I was like, I can't watch that. You would have hated it. OK, well, let's get that. This is a better one by Alex uh, Brill Parkway. Which movie about I think you've seen. Yeah, we've talked. Which movie about drummers is better? This is no question for me. Whiplash or Sound of Metal? Oh, Sound of Metal is way better. I mean, Sound of Metal is like I felt like one of the best movies that year. If not, you know, uh I thought Sound of Metal was great, and I hate Whiplash. I I just started rewatching Whiplash on a plane. I got halfway through. Um, I like Whiplash. I don't. The people, the Whiplash is a weird movie. People think that movie is a masterpiece and one of the best movies ever, or people like loathe that movie. There's no in between on Whiplash, which I am in between. I loathe. I think it's like soulless. I think you both. Are, yeah, I loathe. <laughs> I'm loathing. I, I think it's soulless. I think like I think they're both psychos or just unlikable. It's all about ego and competition and none of the soul of music. Sound of Metal is like it's super intense and like deals a lot with like some so many great issues. I mean, Sound of Metal has its flaws, but Sound of Metal is like all soul and like Whiplash is like no soul. And I'm just sorry. I mean, I can't go get around it. I mean, I know it's not like Miles Teller has the most punchable, obnoxious face in the world. Outside of the four other people who look just like him, fucking Shia like, LaBeouf or, uh, you know, whatever the guy, yeah, Ezra Roll or whatever. I like Miles Teller. I think he's good. I uh, like the uh, Fantastic Now, the Spectacular Now. I thought that movie. I, I'm uh, a sucker for anything recovery, sobriety. So I like his that. His face, his face. No, I like it's his the face. Worst. Good ah, face. The Your worst. face is a lot worse than Miles <laughs> Teller's face. Well, my face. I mean, obviously, tell he's, you he's, that. More, <laughs> he's more attractive, but ah, ah, the worst. No, I like um, his face. There's a lot of guys like that that I hate, but Je Jesse Plemons is a guy like that for me. I see his face and he just stinks. I just want to rub it in dirt. Wait. Wait, which one? Jesse, you mean ugly Matt Damon? Yeah, Fat Damon. You don't like him? I don't like his face. Oh, but he's such a great actor. But his face stinks. We're talking faces. Are we not talking faces? But, That's but, what we're but, talking about. You should be like me and not like uh, attractive faces. That guy's like fucking ugly. What are you getting mad at an ugly guy? I'm gay. What do you want? I, 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 like, <laughs> I like a handsome face. I like Ryan ah. Gosling's face. I hate you a face and I like Gosling's face. What I mean, do you want Miles me to do? Teller looks like the guy who'll fuck your girlfriend in front of you. I forget that's what you want. <laughs> no, I like that. I like Miles Teller. That was between I, I, us, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I love Teller. Don't tell her. <laughs> tell us good. I don't know. I mean, to, to be like, oh, I hate Matt. I mean, what, what, that guy's like a fat, unemployed Matt Damon. You can't That's hate that face guy's sucks. face. You can't hate a guy's face when everyone else hates their face, except for Kristen Dunst. You can't do that. Is he married to Kristen Dunst? It's yeah. Kristen Dunst. Very, Kristen Dunst. He's doing very well for himself. Wait, is it Kristen or Kirsten? Kirsten. I don't know. You corrected me very confidently. I think it's Kirsten Dunst. Um, and Kirsten Kelly. By the way, my most underrated jerk off scene ever. Oh, we talked. Yeah. Look who's talking. What's Kirstie baby? Alley? You're jerking off to the base? No, <laughs> no, I'm not gay. <laughs> Kirstie Alley when she's when she's dancing around, when she does the dance, she does like a sexy dance. It's hot. That's, That's so a go to for me. That's I mean, I get like the pedophile. Get, it's so funny. The idea of fucking a baby and everyone getting mad and being like, I, I'm not gay. I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> like just not saying it. <laughs> it was a great Geraldo joke. Remember that Geraldo joke? No, what's the joke? He's got a um his son and daughter in the back seat and his buddy's like, oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. It's his two. He has two sons. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. He's got two sons and they're in the back seat. They're like, whatever, six and eight. And his buddy's like, oh, your kids are kissing back there. They're gay. And he's like, if they're like being sexually involved, I'm not worried about the gay <laughs> <laughs> <They're> siblings. <laughs> he's like, that's that's what you'd be upset about. Uh, oh, my, my incestual that. son is gay. <laughs> He's the best. He was the best. One what of my favorites are all the jokes. Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, one of my favorites. Like, you don't need drugs when you're a kid. You need drugs when you're an adult. And you have to go to a parent teacher conference because you found out your kid's a half a tard. 
That's what he's going to take out the math and be like, he's just not a reader. What do you expect? That's <laughs> uh, so good. Boy, Calling so your good. kid a half a tart is like the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> he that one, the letter, the Civil War letter is one like the, best, the greatest jokes ever. The, and then he yeah. had a little one. I don't even know if it's on a special. That's so funny. I got to stand up to act it out. Get on the YouTube if you're listening to audio where he goes. Uh, I read an article about a guy who who burned his genital. He's suing a hotel because he burned his genitals in the shower. He's like, that's a weird way to test the water. And he does the knob and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Anyways, um, rest in peace. Great guy. Uh, he's the best. You know what I think is so great about him? He was he had this amazing combination where he had incredible David Tell one liners and like Bill Hicks hot takes. And he like was able, yes. really great at both of those, which is rare you know by the way i want to address i have a winter hat stuffed in my pouch i'm not a fat piece of shit okay like, i don't like jesse plemons uh sorry about to say me um oh this is a great one you're not um, a piece of shit <laughs> ah the young coward i'm not that young i'm 35 uh double secret connor said and this is a good one you'll love this one what's your biggest pet peeve in film and then he added his minus characters not eating food they made or ordered or, and I think this is one you said, when in a bar or club, they talk quietly and hear each other perfectly. Yes, that one bothers me a lot. One that bothers me is a movie that clearly it's whatever, like PG-13, they don't want to show tits, and people are having sex for the first time with the bra on. Mm. Like, if you're married yeah. for a long time, you have sex with a bra on because you're like, let's mix it up and be weird. Yeah. Leave your bra on. But, like, the idea of a guy meeting a woman, taking her home and having sex with her and being like, I don't need to see the tits. <laughs> it's just like, come on. What? Who's ever had sex with a woman the first time and not been done? like, let's get those tits involved? Have you done that as a bit? That's hilarious. Is that a bit? That's I need a great bits. bit. What are you, crazy? That's a great bit. Who doesn't want to see the tits? You start taking on. No, 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 no. That's for next time. Now let me do you in the ass right now. Leave it on. <laughs> I like it's a, a mystery. <laughs> Maybe that's a bit. I'll do it as a bit. That's a good bit. Yeah. Um, the ones I hate. I mean, I, I, I'm sure I've talked about this, but like, you have it every movie. Guns on the other. I have the gun. I'm holding it on you. I'm like, don't come any closer. I mean it. I mean it. And then two minutes later, it's like, I'm serious. And then you pull the hammer back. Yes. Like, like, like you could have pulled it back from the very beginning, but you're like, now I really mean it. Now you really can't. The guy could have just jumped at him the entire time, you know? Yeah. That washing dishes while a married couple's fighting. That's like every movie. Like anytime a married couple's fighting, they're washing the dishes. Where if you're fighting with someone in a relationship, you'd be like, put down the dishes. I'm right. insulted that you're doing this at the same time, you know? Yes. I'm trying to think of others. I'm not listening to you because I'm trying to think of others. But yeah, the dishes is. Uh, oh, well, he, well, here's what we both agree on. Uh, a group of friends laughing when no one said anything funny. Interesting, because I think it's fine. This is a pet peeve of mine. The reverse is that what? nobody's laughing. And this is why Goodfellas is so great. And the, yes. and the funny house scene is amazing. Is everyone's dying laughing, which never happens in film. Like people yes. like dumb and dumber and stuff. People aren't laughing at this stuff like they're not like that's hilarious. Yes. I mean, maybe not dumb and dumber because whatever. But like yeah, yeah. there's movies or TV shows where I'm like, people should be dying laughing like Seinfeld Kramer. Just when he slides in, people should be like on the floor laughing. Yes, that's they're both true. Like it, it, that's a great thing to see in movies like. But that's the thing. Something actually funny is happening and they're cracking up, which is great. But a lot of times they do try to pretend rapport by having like a group oh, of guys exactly. in the back of a truck. And one of them's like, can you believe tomorrow's Tuesday? And we're like, oh, <laughs> and they're just <laughs> laughing. And it's like, oh, I guess they're all friends. The fake laugh when someone didn't say anything funny is like such a cheap bullshit way to pretend to rapport in movies. Yeah. One thing that happens in movies like that is like the movie 13 Hours, which stinks, which is an amazing book. I'm going to sound like you. One of my mm. favorite books about the uh, Libya Benghazi thing. Yeah, it's a great, great book. You're like, these guys are fucking heroes. Is, is this the Mark Wahlberg or is this something else? I think it was something else. Maybe he was in it. He might have been in it. Oh, I, I walked think I out saw of the theater. It. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Lone Survivor is a Mark Wahlberg movie that I think is actually excellent. This is Channing Tatum, right? Yeah, maybe. But yeah. the book is unbelievable. And it's like uh, you should read it. It's a page turn. I have it at the house. But the book, uh, the movie, they try to do this thing that everybody hates i feel like where it's soldiers on a base waiting to get dispatched or whatever mm -hmm. you say and they're like 
Oh, this guy, he, he creams in his pants when he sees that lady. Remember that time in college? You're trying to establish like broness, yeah. and it's yeah, just yeah. always awful. Just skip it. Just skip uh, that. Just shit. skip it. And then and then the last was that, like the bad joke in the lab, the worst. Yeah. Um, I would say that scene in Goodfellas, it's also kind of funny. The laughter makes it it's kind of the opposite with how funny because if we were there, we would not be laughing because it's terrifying. But like they're just like, you know what I mean? They're just kind of laughing because they're like also just crazy, you know? Right? I think they, they don't know. I, I disagree because they don't realize how terrifying it is. They're, they're laughing they're before they're laughing, the they're laughing before they get quiet when he That's starts right. threatening him. No, you're right. You're right. When he's you're telling right. the story and, and you're removed from it. You're like, I don't know this guy. He's just a guy that's being crazy and he's telling a hilarious story. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. T- take that back completely. They perfectly capture the laughter. Yeah. And that's um, what makes the scene so amazing. Just lastly, is because. It's so real and how much they went from having a great time to just stunned. They're all yes, sitting there. Yes. He, goes, he knows what he knows what he said. And then going back to that, you're getting it the all other, wrong. The other thing that they do, I, I always hate in movies is this, um, this thing where like someone's about to say a truth bomb and the other person's like, don't say it. And he's like, don't say it. And then it's like, you're afraid of love. And she's like, no. And then he starts screaming after they say it. The idea that someone just has like a big revelation about that person's character, and then the person yells a minute. They, you know, what I'm talking about. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's I hate that. Are there other ones? I feel like there was a big one, one more. It's not a, a cliche, but the number one thing that bothered me the most in any movie ever. Number mm-hmm. one, Zero Dark Thirty, Jessica Chastain. Um, excuse me. Who is she? I'm the motherfucker who found it. <laughs> Worst movie ever. I mean, worst line in any no, movie. That movie's just, good, but the movie's good. Bad. That movie's line good. Yeah. is so, so, so bad. <laughs> I can't even like. Oh, but that you know what? I, I I have a feeling she probably wanted to have that added in. You know, she seems like that kind of person. Uh, um, but that movie is quite good. I actually want to watch that again. All right. Uh, Tyler Andre Wilson said, "Joe, any updates on you and Louis's movie?" And then to placate me, he said, "Ron, on what have you been writing?" <laughs> um, well, there's up to, I talked to Louie today and we talked to a film distribution person and we're very excited. It'll be out in the summer. It'll be out in the summer. It's going to be in, in some theaters. Yeah, it's going to be out in some theaters and it's going to be available to uh, download. You can like the way things are now. You can watch it at home. You can watch it in the theater. And I would urge everyone to go see it in the theater. Of course, my dream is it's going to be on IFC. I would love for that. You know, the theater. Well, that's a dream. All right. That's a dream. If it's not going to happen. Well, I think what I anticipate is that a lot of these kind of cool art housey cinemas, uh, they got, you know, 22 year olds working that go, no. Yeah. I guess you're going to have to do the theaters where they have all the mentally handicapped people kind of the tickets. Cause yeah. I think it's going to be like the me too movement. Yeah. I think, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We will or see. The, or the, the really old people. They don't care either. You know? Yeah. I think about 90% of people don't care. Yeah. I guess what we're saying is it's probably not going to be at film form. No. Um, or the Angelica. But maybe, you know, um, but uh, yeah, but well, exciting. That's really exciting. It's a great movie. Um, all right, let's just do one more. Um, I'm trying to think of a good one. Um, uh, I mean, this is a first film or film experience that made you realize you love film as an art form. I feel like we've probably had that question, but it's a good one. By, uh, as an so art form. Easy. Um, just a couple thoughts come to my head. Yes, that unrelated. We keep talking about Seinfeld. The Seinfeld, the I pulled it out of the whale, and the is it a Titleist hole in one? That blew my mind more than any experience of watching anything ever. Where I was like, this show is so different than anything. Oh, sorry, that's just a TV show. Um, the first thing I have a crazy moment, but anyway, keep on going. (laughs) It is crazy, but they address how crazy it is. They don't show it. In the later episode, they would have tried to show George on a thing. They just told it in story form. And Larry was extremely, extremely skeptical of that and didn't want to do it. And they finally did it in a way that they pulled it off by telling the story. And it is ridiculous. And it's the most ridiculous. And Larry was really, really had a hard time with it. That's why it's so annoying that season eight and nine, they did that to his show. Ah, Look, Um, I, I love them all, you know. But anyways, um, my first movie, the first movie I saw in the theaters was 101 Dalmatians. I was like five or six. And I remember Mm -hmm. leaving there. I remember sitting down and watching and being like, my mind was absolutely blown, even though it's whatever movie. But the idea of sitting in this thing with this giant screen, the crazy sound. So from that. That really 
um, blew me away. I mean, how exciting was it going to a movie when you were a kid? It was just crazy. Insane. That, it, it was in such, and now you're just sitting there with cum on your pants, and you're like, I have an hour before a show. It's just depressing. But going to a movie as a kid with your parents, it was one of the most exciting things ever. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I still love it. I'm not as bitter, but um, <laughs> I mean, Jurassic Park was amazing and Jurassic, exciting. Yeah, I pee myself watching Jurassic Park tw twice, once because I'm scared, once because I did not want to leave the movie. It was one of the, it's still the greatest experience of my life seeing Jurassic Park in theaters. That's embarrassing. But yeah, no, it's <laughs> that was great. Um, boy, it's hard to say. I mean, I'm trying to think of like my movie obsession really became like I took a film class sophomore year in high school and I was so excited. The Graduate is a movie. I have to say The Graduate because we studied it so much and so hard in a film class in high school. And it that made me think about watching movies like The Color, the shots, right. all these crazy choices. And we just broke it down, watched hours and hours of stuff about it. And to think, and that's the first movie studying that, that where I heard someone say like, every single thing in a movie is a conscious decision. Right, right. Which is what right. makes me look at like Easter eggs and stuff. The idea of like the car is that color. The sound yes. is, a, the, they're, they're far away, but you can hear them up close for all these reasons right. and all these yes. decisions. So The Graduate is a movie that really changed the way I watched and think about, thought about uh, cinema. Yeah, because there's two different things. Yeah, I guess seeing it as an art form would not be the younger experiences because you're not even thinking of it really as an art form, I guess. Right. So I guess the graduate, I see for me, I'm trying to think of the, yeah, it's like for me, Jaws and Wizard of Oz and Jurassic Park were the most meaningful experiences as a kid. But I think the first movie that I may have like understood like this underlying depth might have been, I don't know, maybe Rosemary's Baby was a movie that I watched where I was like, Oh, she like loves him at the end, even though he's the devil. It's like this, you know, overly like this maternal love. I don't know. There's something something about that. I was like, oh, this is really moving, you know, boring. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. Yeah, it's tough to know when you look at movies like I don't even like when you go from looking at movies as something awesome to be like, oh, this is like intentional, you know? Yeah, it's um, and some people never do, which is also yeah. fine. That's yeah. the great thing about movies. Um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, good question. Yeah. Movies as a kid. I'd give anything to go back to that. Yeah, it was fun. <sighs> yeah. It's just when you're a kid, it's just like, everything's just so much more intense. I mean, I there's know. shitty parts about that too. I mean, kids like cry eight times a day. Imagine if you cried eight times a day now. I would, would probably be healthier, but yeah, no, I'm with two of them right now. And it's tricky. You're like little things that you're like, wait, what? That's it. You I are? know. And then they cry and then they forget about it. That's the other thing. My nephew had the biggest temper tantrum in the car one night. Like literally, like if me and my sister talked, he would start screaming. He demanded no one talk. And the next day I'm like, are you feeling better? And he's like, what are you talking about? Like they don't remember anything. Yeah, They're of assholes and they forget it, you know? Yeah, we're not that dissimilar. We have, that's the fascinating thing about children is we have all the same, they have the same emotions as us. People think of as kids as like, underdeveloped and stupid and whatever and like are quiet but we have the same they just have just true. as in-depth feelings and also what's fascinating is about the formative years zero through six like that's everything with the way we react everything now is how we learn to react when we are ages zero through six obviously you do it at lesser degree because socially it's not acceptable to stomp your feet but i still feel yeah. that way when you know i'm i mess up the times and i'm late for a movie and i miss the first five minutes the feeling i have inside is I know. <laughs> you know what I mean, you just can't know, do yeah. that. So you just go fuck and you yell True. at your wife. All that when you see a kid crying all the time, you're like, oh, I guess that's what I'm bearing all the time. <laughs> like, uh, 100%. But uh, but also, like with kids, um, what, what the fuck was I going to say? Ironically, I can't remember because I have dementia. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good to be a kid. Um, and uh, I miss it. But yeah. Um, but yeah, this was a good episode. <laughs> It was great. Totally Flew by. Brain fog part. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to do some plugs? Yeah, I'll do some plugs. Um, well, the, the the we're getting closer and closer to the special. I think the special is going to come out April 8th. That's the wow. tentative release date. Yes. Three days before you shoot yours. It's always overshadowing me. April 11th. <laughs> what do you mean? That's not that's what you got out of that. What you should have got out of that is I know <laughs> your special. I'm plugging. Your that's special. right. You're right. I remember Thank the you. date and I'm plugging it and I'm wearing McDonald's colors. I just realized. That's what you should hear instead, because you because right. of ages zero through six, your sibling rival sibling <laughs> rivalry or whatever, you're like, well, oh. <laughs> um, right. 
Well, I had a lot of trauma back then. It stuck with me. I appreciate you remembering. Of course, yeah. Special. Check out a special on April. At the Fat Black Pussycat, April eleventh. Wow. <laughs> Fat Black Pussycat. Uh, Bobby tried to convince me to tape it there, which was insane. That is insane. No, he told, um, me, to, told me to tape it at the bar. But anyway, keep on going. The bar? Yeah, he's. I it's think the worst from the city. Me. Yeah, I know. Uh, but yeah, so go subscribe to the YouTube. Please spread the word about this and go follow me on social media. I got a bunch of dates coming up. Boston, Laugh Boston, April 14th through 16 buffalo helium the weekend after that and uh i got a whole bunch of damn coming to nashville uh key west um san francisco vancouver whole bunch of shit yeah san francisco june 8th through the 10th whole bunch of stuff comedian joe for dates um yeah check him out and yeah come uh my my i'm, I'm retaping my special it's postponed i'm doing it at the seller if you live in new york and get off this program and fucking go on my Instagram. The link is there. Uh, it, you can reserve ticks now. You don't even have to pay until you're after you're at the show. After and you run out of your bill, you don't have to pay at all. But like reserve <laughs> ticks and get ticks now because I, I need people there. And if, uh, please get ticks now because I'm gonna have a nervous breakdown. It's a, April 11th at eight and ten at the Comedy Cellar. It's my hour. Um, and also, if you live in Europe, I mean, I'm going to be basically all over Europe. So for a, I'm go, I'm leaving Saturday till March 28th. So, you know, Switzerland, Germany, uh, Copenhagen, uh, Denmark, Paris. No, not Paris, but, uh, you know, a bunch of other places. Yeah, Kiev you don't want to go to Paris. <laughs> Kiev is Thanks. still on the list. Um, and and, and, and be patient with the podcast because we might have to be late a couple times because he's gallivanting. Yeah, I'm gallivanting. I'm gallivanting. So my, <laughs> he, he was looking for an excuse for not to do this. So uh, we might, we're going to do our best. We can do our best, but, you know, it's going to be tough. I'm going to have to – I don't know if Netflix works there. I, I'm, I, we might have to be only doing Swedish films. It's uh, – for the next month so I can watch it, but uh, we'll figure it out, you know? Uh, all going to be and, great. All right. Well, thanks, Joe. And uh... never heard you say my name. <laughs> it's weird when someone says your name. Like, every once in a while, Sarah will be like, hey, Joe. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. I had one time someone say Ron on in bed, the only time ever. And it was like amazing. She was like, oh, Ron on. I'm like, oh my God. Like, no one ever said my name. Are you sure that she wasn't saying I'm going to run on home? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Good night, all folks. Right. Cut. Cut. <laughs>